Louis Patron back with the Key West Lou Legal Hour. When I left you at the end of the last segment, I was talking about the Boston Marathon bomber, the one that's still alive, the 19-year-old in the hospital, his Miranda rights and everything else. Now, he's going to, he was on Friday when he was arrested. We understood he was to be questioned be, under the public safety exemption of the Miranda rule, but they'd stay within the confines of that. Uh, and everyone was enthused. Now we go to the United States Congress on Friday evening and Saturday during the day. And I love these guys. They do everything but legislate. Remember, congressmen, United States senators, are legislators. They're part of the legislative branch. To me, they don't pass laws. They don't pass many good laws. And what they pass, I, I don't like generally. But they don't legislate that much. You see how it is out there. I don't have to tell you. But yet they know everything about everything else and they pontificate and they go on television and they make all kinds of stupid ass statements. For example, I see, and I like this guy, but I think he's gotten crazy in his bid for re-election, Senator Lindsey Graham. We want intelligence people questioning this 19-year-old. We don't want the FBI or the justice people. We want intelligence people questioning them. Now, even though I'm knocking the FBI for how they're handling this case, let me tell you something right now. They're a pretty good group of people, because I'm going to be knocking them a little more during the show, but they are good. They screw up, and there's a lot of screw-ups here, apparently. Uh, but if you want someone to question you, don't worry about it. The FBI, they know how to do it. The attorneys in the United States Justice Department, they know how to do it. I spent my life working against these people. I know how this system works. They're good. No disrespect to them, okay? But Graham and the other congressmen and senators, uh, King, the, re the uh, House of Representatives fellow from New York, we want intelligence people. Well, I never heard of intelligence people. Who are the intelligence people? Are, are, are these investigators or questioning people we're going to get from Guantanamo? Well, they already did a great job. They took blood and told the Muslims this was menstrual blood and sprayed it on them. Uh, they waterboarded. Okay, and things like that. It, they kept them up for hours, days, without letting them sleep with a bright light on them. Uh, is this the question, kind of questioning we're going to do? This is the United States of America. These are not foreigners in jail in Guantanamo. These, this kid's a United States citizen. I keep stressing it, because if you let the government screw him, they'll screw you tomorrow. That's the way it works. Okay, so I think this is so funny, or so stupid, we want intelligence people. Moving on, staying with this marathon, the Boston Marathon and the bombing situation. The media bothers me. Everything bothers me about this case, by the way. I don't know why. The me and I, I feel bad for everyone that's been injured. Over 200 now, I think 270 have been injured. The number keeps going up and we know we have three dead. The media, television, the newspapers, uh, radio, they all refer to this 19-year-old, most of them, as a boy. As a boy. He is a man. He, majority, I assume, in Massachusetts, mean when you're an adult is 18. He is a man. And what aggravates me even more is that if he were in Afghanistan now, or Iraq, fighting uh, for the United States, part of our military team, the Army, Navy, Marines, what have you, he would be referred to as an army man. They would not call him a boy. Our soldiers are men. And they're 18, 19, and 20 years old over there dying for us and getting maimed. So why here do we call him a boy when he'd be a man if he was fighting for his country? I think there is an intrinsic, basic tendency on the part of the media to try to make things easier for people who are charged with crimes by referring to them in the most subtle manner He's and the softest, he's a boy. He's not a boy. He's a man. He had the intelligence to make the bomb with his brother. He had the intelligence to use the bomb. He had the intelligence to get in a shootout with the cops. He had the intelligence to help steal a, a car with his brother. He is a man, and he's a man by definition. And if he was a soldier, he'd be a man. Now, he's a soldier for his own cause, Islamism. Uh, but the media should not refer to him as a boy. 
Now I'm going to stay with the Boston bombing a little bit more. This you're going to love. The NRA, the National Rifle Association. There, I came across this article. I found it very interesting. Uh, and it said that the NRA impeded, impeded, that means they held up or they made it difficult, the Boston investigation, the Boston bombing investigation. I said, how the hell can the NRA impede it? Didn't that make sense to me? Well, here's what happened. 30 years ago, 30 years ago, the NRA was nowhere as near strong as they are today. And there was a move at that time to take gunpowder. Because when you make a bomb, various parts of that bomb contain some variation of gunpowder. Otherwise, it wouldn't explode. And to put what they call a tagant, T-A-G-G-A-N-T in it, tagant. I don't know what a tagant is other than it's something they mix in the gunpowder. And when there's a bombing or there's an explosion, the authorities immediately can take whatever residue there is of the gunpowder, send it to a lab, and in a matter of hours, know where it was manufactured and who the retailer was who sold it, and then that accelerates the whole investigation and hopefully and generally they could find whoever perpetrated the crime within a matter of hours, also not a matter of days. Well, the NRA came out and said, no, we don't want this, the munitions people, who are also the gun manufacturers, by the way, so we get everything in proper perspective. They didn't want it because they want to sell more gunpowder and they don't want anybody screwing up the gunpowder business. Also, it would cut into their profits, the article said, if we had to put tagnets in it. And by the way, this tagnet isn't strange. I did not know this. I'm telling you now. It's in fruits and vegetables that you buy in the grocery store, in the supermarket. So if there's a food poisoning case, they can immediately tell where that stuff was grown. It's the barcode on bottles and cans of beer and soda you buy in a store. What will immediately tell where this stuff was manufactured or produced, uh, who sold it, and trace it back to wherever the initial and responsible wrongdoer is. So it's nothing new. But they got involved back then, and so we don't have this. We don't have the tagments in, in munition, in gunpowder. What would it have meant in this case? This incident occurred on a Monday while the marathon was being run. On Thursday night, the MIT police officer, the 26-year-old Sean Collier, was shot Thursday night. It is possible, it is thought in some circles, that if the Tagnets had been in the gunpowder on Monday, they would have found these two guys, these two bombers, Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, nowhere near Thursday night when Collier was shot. And perhaps Collier would not have been shot if we had this protection in our gunpowder. Now, one more issue on the bombing, and it's proper, I guess, to talk about so many issues concerning the bombing because it's a big deal in this country. It's, we've been attacked again. I'm a Catholic, a fallen away Catholic. We have a Cardinal O'Malley in Boston. I'm going to speak poorly of my church, of Cardinal right now, the Cardinal. Now, I disagree with him. I like him. He, he almost had a shot. He had a shot at becoming the Pope. Uh, many thought if there was an American Cardinal who became Pope, it would be him. He's a nice guy. I've seen him on television. He's a big, fat guy. He's always got a smile. Hello, how are you? Pat you on the back. He reminds me of the kind of fellow I'd like to share a bottle of beer with. That's all. I'd like to have a beer with the guy. Well, last Sunday in church in Boston, in his homily, you know, in his sermon at Mass, he said we should forgive. We should forgive these two Boston bombers. We should not bear them ill will. We should not carry revenge in our hearts. Uh, remember, venge you know, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When Christ was on the cross and he was dying, he looked up and he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Fine. This was God the Son talking to God the Father, saying, forgive them, don't bear them no ill will. Everyone who was injured, Everyone who was killed, their families, are not God. I'm not God. I bear these guys ill will. I bear this 19-year-old survivor ill will. How dare he shoot people up like that? How dare he? It's wrong. It's terribly wrong. 
And I just can't forgive and forget. I mean, did the, did the Jews marching into the gas chambers look up to heaven and say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do with regard to the Germans. Uh, you can't forgive and forget. It's just not that way. Maybe years from now people will forgive and forget, but now no one's going to forgive and forget. And vengeance and retribution belongs on the side of the United States the fa and the families and the people injured. Everyone is entitled to feel, get them, screw them, kill this guy. Because that's the way it is. That's nature's way, and that is the proper way. Now, when we come back, I've got a story to tell you about hospitals that you are not going to believe again. I, I, I don't know what's happening in this world. It's going to shock you what I'm, going to, what I'm going to share with you. So please stay with me, and when we return, I've got a hospital story that's out of this world. Okay? We're running out of time, 1098. Five, four, three, two, one. I'll see you in a couple of minutes after commercial break.